Hello, viewers. You're welcome to our lecture series on the protozoans. Earlier, I had explained what protozoans are, and uh, we've also looked at the general characteristics of the protozoans and their classification. And I had already explained that the protozoans are uh, eukaryotic unicellular organisms that are animal-like in nature. They are unicellular organisms that are animal-like and they exhibit heterotrophic nutrition instead of autotrophic nutrition. And they, were, they are classified into the uh, kingdom Protoptista and the sub-kingdom Protozoa. And they are classified based on uh, their locomotory apparatus into four groups and ten, uh, and these four groups have ten phyla. The four groups are the the amoeboid protozoans, the ciliate protozoans, the flagellate protozoans, and the sporozoans. The amoeboid protozoans, uh, those protozoans that move with the aid of pseudopodia. The flagellate protozoans move with the aid of flagella, while the and the ciliate protozoans move with the aid of cilia. The sporozoans do not have locomotory apparatus, and as such, they are immortal. They are, they, are, they are able to move from one place to another. So we want to look at the amoeboid protozoans today. Now, what are the amoeboid protozoans? <clears throat> what are the amoeboid protozoans? The amoeboid protozoans are protozoans that are characterized by the possession of pseudopodia. An amoeboid is a type of cell or organism that's capable of changing its shape mainly by extending and retracting pseudopodia or pseudopods. They are shapeless protists, shapeless protozoans, and uh, they are mainly known, uh, the most widely known uh, amoeboid protozoa is Amoeboid, uh, amoeba proteus, the amoeba proteus. And these organisms are capable of changing their shape mainly by extending and retracting pseudopodia or pseudopods. They extend their, uh, their pseudopods and then flow into them, just as it is on this, uh, on the right hand side of the screen. This is a typical amoeboid protozoa. It doesn't have a definite shape, it can change its shape at any, at any time. And the pseudopods are extended and they, they, they flow into those uh, extensions or protrusions of the cell. Now, the word pseudopodia is derived from a Greek word meaning, which means false feet. So the pseudopods are used for locomotion, but they are not permanently in any, they are not uh, situated permanently in any part of the body of the cell. Any part of the body can form a pseudopod and Use, it's used for movement. And the pseudopods are also used for feeding as well. They are normally found in soil and in aquatic habitats. The amoeboid protozoans are usually found in the soil and in aquatic habitats. They move by using pseudopodia. They typically ingest their food by phagocytosis. The amoeboid protozoans exhibit phagocytosis in which the uh, food particle is engulfed. They, they surround the food with a pseudopodia and engulf the food. And that process of feeding, that type of feeding is called phagocytosis. They extend their pseudopodia to engulf the prey. They do not possess a mouth or cytostome. The amoeboid protozoans do not possess cell mouth. That's called a cytostome. And as such, they can feed with any part of their membrane okay any part any area that the food is close to forms a pseudopod and engulfs the food the pseudopodia engulf the food now there are four types uh, of pseudopodia that are common to the amoeboid protozoans and these four types of pseudopodia are one lobopodia then we have the philopodia then we have the uh, reticulopodia and the axo Podia. Now, the lobopodia are characteristic of the true amoeba, amoeba protis, and they are usually blunt and finger-like in shape. They are usually blunt, 
and finger like just as it is at the right hand side of this picture these are lobo ports they are blunt and finger like in shape they are blunt and finger like in shape the second type of pseudopodia that are common to the amoeboid protozoans are philopodia philopodia the philopodia are usually slender and tapering occasionally forming simple branch networks they are slender they are slender and they are tapering pointed at the extremes and they sometimes form simple branched networks the next type of uh, pseudopodia that's found among the amoeboid protozoans are called reticulopodia reticulopodia are found in the foraminiferans the uh, organisms the amoeboid protozoans in the phylum foraminifera and they are usually branching filaments that fuse to form food traps the reticulopodia are branching filaments that fuse to form food traps then we have the axopodia the yeah, axopodia are characteristic of the actinopods or the radiolarians okay those in the phylum actinopoda or radiozoa okay and they are commonly called the radiolarians and these axopod this axopodia are long and sticky like uh, reticulopodia but radiate singly and have a stiff internal rod composed of numerous microtubules. So the uh, long and sticky uh, pseudopodia, type of pseudopodia, but they actually radiate singly and have a stiff internal rod composed of numerous uh, microtubules. So uh, radiculopodia forms uh, branching filaments that fuse to form food traps on the other hand, the uh, axopodia are actually long and sticky, okay, not forming uh, those branch networks that are common to the reticulopodia. Now, amoeboid protozoans belong to three phyla. They are classified into three phyla, and these three phyla are the phylum sacodina or sacomastigophora, which consists of the true amoeba. Then the second phylum is the phylum actinopoda or radiozoa, which has the radiolarians, and the phylum foraminifera, which has the foraminiferans. I want to look at the phylum sacodina or sacomastigophora. The phylum sacodina or sacomastigophora. It has the true amoebas, the true amoebas. Now, the phylum sacodina or sacomastigophora consists of the true amoebas. The movement in sacodins, that's the true amoebas, is by extending lobes of cytoplasmic cytoplasm known as pseudopodia or pseudopod. They extend their, uh, their cytoplasm to form pseudopod, just as it is shown here. The cytoplasm extends to form the pseudopodia or the pseudopods, the false feet. Pseudopodia, pseudopodia, or the singular word for pseudopodia is pseudopodium. The pseudopodia are flowing projections of cytoplasm that extends and pulls the amoeba forward of engulf food particles to engulf food particles. The, the pseudopodia pulls the amoeba forward to engulf food particles. They are flowing projections. They flow and they for, they, when the cytoplasm streams, it uh, pushes a part of the membrane forward. It protrudes, it protrudes, and then the amoeba flows into it. And it is also used to engulf food particles. The pseudopodia is used for movement and feeding. It has the pseudopodia have two functions. The two functions of the pseudopodia of amoeba uh, one for movement, and then secondly for feeding. The pseudopodia are used for movement and for feeding. During the formation of the pseudopodia, the cytoplasm streams into the lobe, causing the, the lobe to ooze and grow, a type of motion called cytoplasmic streaming. That type of motion in which the pseudopodia, uh, the cytoplasm streams into a lobe and then causes the lobe to ooze and grow is called cytoplasmic streaming.
So the cytoplasm streams, it produce a, a kind of current that creates pressure on the membrane of the cell, which now extends, which now protrudes to form the pseudopodia. And that type of movement is mainly uh, motion, it's called cytoplasmic streaming. Because of this, pseudopodia have a blob-like appearance. Uh, the, the pseudopodia have a blob-like appearance. A well-known species of amoeba is amoeba protis, which is found on decaying bottom vegetation of freshwater streams and ponds. The well-known species of the, the amoeba in the phylum Sarcodina or Sarcomastigophora is amoeba protis, and the sebentic organism is found on decaying bottom vegetation of fresh water streams and ponds. There are numerous parasitic amoebas. There are some parasitic uh, amoeba. Of six species found in human alimentary tract, and amoeba histolytica causes amoebic dysentery. But there are some amoeba that are found, six species of amoeba are found in the alimentary tract or the alimentary canal of humans. But one of them causes uh, amoebic dysentery, and that's an amoeba histolytica. Two related free living genera of increasing biomedical importance are ascent amoeba species, ascent amoeba and uh, nucleria. And these strains uh, have been recognized as disease causing parasites in several vertebrates, including humans. So ascent amoeba species and nucleria species are uh, also known to cause uh, diseases in humans and other animals. Now, here is a figure that's showing the uh, amoeba, amoeba protis. Okay, amoeba protis. It has a uh, lobopodia type of pseudopodia. Okay, now the pseudopodia or the pseudopod means four feet and they are used for movement and for gathering food. Then they also possess a contractile vacuole. The contractile vacuole excretes water and other waste products. Then the food vacuole is actually formed when food is engulfed by the amoeba. Now, the, when the amoeba uh, uh, is about to feed, it extends its pseudopodia, and the pseudopodia surrounds the organism and engulfs it, draws it in, in and it's uh, this, the, the ectoplasm cuts of forming a vacuum and then the food is being digested within the, the, the food particle that's being ingested is being digested by the vacuum it's like the, the digestive system in the case of uh, that's in higher animals okay it's like the digestive system so the vacuum functions like the digestive system while the contractor the food vacuum forms like uh, acts like the digestive system while the contractor vacuum acts like the excretory system okay it's the excretory organelle of the of the uh, amoeba then you have the nucleus which con which controls uh, 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 reproduction and growth then the uh, cytoplasm which is uh, the the uh, part where other organelles are suspended, then the membrane covers the cell. The, the membrane, the cell membrane covers the cell. Now I want to look at the second phylum of amoeba protozoans, which is the phylum Actinopoda, the phylum Actinopoda or Regiozoa, which has the Regiolarians. Now the phylum Actinopoda, often called Regiolarians, are marine or pelagic, they are marine pelagic organisms that secrete glassy exoskeleton made of silica. Now, these, uh, the actinopods are marine pelagic. Marine organisms are organisms that are found in the ocean, that inhabit the ocean. So, <clears throat> unlike the amoeba protozoans that are usually found in freshwater habitats, the, the, uh, the amoeba protozoans in the phylum Sarcodina or Sarcomastigophora that are found in freshwater habitats and some of which are some of uh, which are parasitic, causing various diseases in humans. The actinopods are actually uh, 
found in the sea. They are marine organisms and they are pelagic. They are found floating on the surface of the ocean. They are found in the upper layers of all oceans. The, uh, the Sarcodina or Sarcomastigophora are usually benthic, benthic, uh, mostly freshwater uh, amoeboid protozoans, but the actinopods are marine protozoans. And one other distinctive feature is that they secrete glassy exoskeleton that's called test. Okay, glassy exoskeleton made of silica. So this uh, skeleton gives them a distinct shape exhibiting either a bilateral or radial symmetry. So unlike the sarcodina or sarcomastigophora that do not have a definite shape, the actinopods have a definite shape. They have a definite shape and they have bilateral or radial symmetry while the sarcodines are asymmetrical. They do not have a symmetry. The defining characteristics of this group is that their bodies are divided into distinct intercapsular and extracapsular zones separated by perforated membrane or capsule. They are bod their bodies are divided into distinct intercapsular and extracapsular zones. Okay, so uh, capsule, the, the, the skeleton, there's a skeleton inside that protects the nucleus and there is another that protects the rest of the organism. So they have two uh, tests or uh, skeletal structures. So the one inside is the intercapsular, while the one that's outside is the intracapsular. Now look at uh, the, the shells of different species form many elaborate and beautiful shapes with pseudopods extruding outward along spiky projections of the skeleton. Now, the pseudopods of these organisms, they uh, extrude outward along spiky projections of the skeleton. Microtubules support these cytoplasmic projections. Micro, uh, microtubules support the cytoplasmic projections. Now, these are various shapes of uh, the radiolarian uh, skeleton, the exoskeleton. Now, this, the radiolarians have both uh, internal, intercapsular, and extracapsular zones, the inter and the extracapsular uh, zone, the outer covering and the inner covering. And they, have, they, they, are, they basically have various shapes. This, uh, they have definite shape, and they can either be radial or bilaterally symmetrical. They can either be radially symmetrical or bilaterally symmetrical. <laughs> In contrast to the bottom dwelling foraminifera, <clears throat> all radiolarians are, and most asentherians are planktonic organisms passively carried about by ocean currents. They are planktonic organisms. They form a major part of the zooplankton population. They, they are found on the surface, they're found floating on the surface of the water, but it drifting <clears throat> as the water flows. <clears throat> so they are plantains. They are plantains, zooplanktons that are found in oceans. Many species possess symbiotic algae and so are able to carry out photosynthesis. Okay, so they engulf algae and this algae have a symbiotic relationship with them. And that's kind of symbiosis where the algae lives within the, <clears throat> the actinopod and then are able to produce food for them while the actinopod provides uh, shelter for them is a mutualistic relationship, symbiotic relationship that's called endosymbiosis. They also feed as carnivores, capturing microscopic prey with the cytoplasm that flows along their axopods. So, they also carry out phagocytosis. They combine both phagocytosis <clears throat> and photosynthesis. And that type of uh, uh, feeding in which an organism combines both phagocytosis and photosynthesis is said to be mixotrophy. They exhibit mixotrophy, okay? So they exhibit mixotrophy. Now, a sexual reproduction of radiolarians is by body, binary fusion or multiple fusion. They reproduce 
by boarding, binary fusion, or multiple fusion asexually. Generally, the skeleton divides and each daughter cell regenerates the missing half. Okay, when, uh, when it, uh, it's not going binary fusion, the, the parent cell divides, the skeleton of the parent cell divides into two halves and each of them regenerates the missing half and become matured uh, actinopause. Now, in some cases, however, one daughter cell escapes and develops an entirely new shell. The other daughter remain within the parent skeleton, and that's the body. They will produce true body to their fragmentations when uh, one cell splits into more than two parts, more than two cells that uh, they grow to become uh, adults, that grow to maturity. Now I want to look at the next phylum, which is the phylum foraminifera among the amoeboid protozoans, the phylum foraminifera. Members of the phylum foraminifera are heterotrophic marine protists. They are heterotrophic marine protists. And they are also marine protists, just like the actinopus or the radiosua. They are found in the sea and they are heterotrophic, not being able to carry out photosynthesis. Foraminiferans are characterized by long, fine pseudopodia that extend from a uninucleated or multinucleated cytoplasmic body encased within a test <coughs> or shell. They are uh, known to possess long, fine pseudopodia that extend from a uninucleated or multinucleated cytoplasmic body encased within a test. So they have the long uh, uh, pseudopodia. Now, let us look at the defining characteristics of the foraminifera. Individuals secrete multi-chamber tests, generally of calcium carbonate. Now, one distinction between the foraminifera and the actinopus or the radiozoa, also called the radiolaria, is that the tests of the actinopods are made up of silica, while those of the uh, uh, foraminifera are made up of calcium carbonate. The shells, the tests of the foraminifera are made up of calcium carbonate. Remember that the uh, sarcodins, those in the phylum Sarcomastigophora, do not have shells, tests, and as such, they are asymmetrical. They do not have definite shape. So the Actinopods and the foraminiferans have a definite shape, while the sarcodins do not have a definite shape. The actinopods and the foraminiferans are uh, marine organisms, while the, the sarcodins are mostly freshwater and some are parasitic. Some are parasitic. Now, the, the foraminiferans have a shell that's made up of calcium carbonate. The pseudopodia that are found in the actinopods are usually reticulopodia, usually reticulopodia. And they emerge through pores in the test and branch externally to form dense networks. They form dense networks. Now I want to look at uh, a, a typical example of the foraminifera. And this is, uh, this foraminifera is called Ammonia tepida has uh, filamentous uh, uh, pseudopodia that, that are called reticulopodia. They form branch networks, and these branch networks are used to engulf prey and are also used for locomotion. They are also used for locomotion. When the foraminiferans die, their empty calcareous tests sink and form a so called foraminiferal ooze that covers about 30% of the ocean floor. Limestone and chalk are products of foraminiferan bottom deposits. So the, the shells usually sink to the bottom when, they, when the foraminifera die and they form what is called the foraminifera ooze in the ocean floor. And limestone and chalk can be gotten from these shells. The major factors governing the growth, reproduction, and distribution of foraminifera uh, water temperature, depth and salinity, availability of suitable food, nature of substrate and uh, substratum, and oxygen supply. 
So the growth, reproduction, and distribution of foraminiferas are determined by these physical chemical parameters, such as water temperature, depth and salinity, availability of suitable food, nature of substratum, and oxygen supply. Now I want to look at the reproduction of the foraminiferans, reproduction of the in the forum inference, although some species of forum inference reproduce exclusively by asexual means, usually by multiple fusion, bonding, and fragmentation. For most species, there is a regular or an occasional sexual generation. Okay, so there are, there are sexual generations among the forum inference that carry out sexual reproduction. Thanks a lot for watching this uh, video on the amoeboid protozoans. I believe you've learned a lot from it. We have learned about the various phyla of amoeboid protozoans, the phylum sarcodina or sarcomastigophora, the phylum actinopoda or radiozoa, and the phylum foraminifera. And their distinctive features are also discussed. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more updates on the protozoans and other animals.